Hello, in this video you will learn the basics of animation in Blender 2.8. So before I go ahead and get started, Blender's animation system is based on the idea of keyframes. So a keyframe is basically a snapshot of an object's location, rotation and scale at a specified point in time. So let's go ahead and change over to the animation workspace of Blender 2.8 so that we have this uh, layout, which is most optimal for animation. Okay, so we have a timeline over here to play back our animation. We have uh, the camera view over here. So if I move the camera view, our view also moves in this view over here so we can see what our animation looks like uh, when rendered. And we also have our 3D viewport over here. Okay, so for this example, I'm just going to get rid of the cube and maybe add a, I don't know, like a, a UV sphere. So we're going to try to try to animate a ball. So I'm just going to smooth the shading. So by pressing W, smooth shading, so that we get something that looks like this. Note that we are rendering in the new EV rendering engine, which is the new real-time rendering engine. So yeah, let's get started. In Blender 2.8, there's three different ways to animate objects in Blender. First is using shortcut keys. To animate in Blender, we need to use keyframes. And the shortcut key to create keyframes is I. So once I hit I on my keyboard, I'm presented with these options over here. So if I, for example, select location, we can see that we've created a keyframe on the X, Y, and Z location. But uh, for most cases, we probably want to create a keyframe for location, rotation, and scale. This one tends to be the most common one. So now we're on frame 3 over here. If I go to say frame, I don't know, 30, and then move this object. So let's just turn on our widgets. And um, let's just move the object over here somewhere, let's say. Or I might move it on the x-axis somewhere. And then I might rotate it a little bit like so. We can't really see it since it's a sphere. And then I might just scale it up a bit. Or maybe down. Now I want to create another keyframe at frame 30. So I, I hit I, then lock rot scale to create a keyframe for the location, rotation and scale. Now when I scrub the timeline back to the beginning and then play back my animation by hitting play, we can see we very quickly created a very basic animation using keyframes. And all I needed to press was the I key on my keyboard. Now of course, if you're coming into Blender 2.8 for the first time and you hate using shortcut keys, there's other ways to do it as well. So let me just go ahead and clear these keyframes by uh, right-clicking and shift-right-clicking this one and pressing X, delete keyframes. The other way to animate without using shortcut keys is to use uh, the automatic keyframe insertion. So this is the second way of animating in Blender 2.8. So if I hit uh, this uh, circle button here, that means anything I do in this view will automatically uh, create a keyframe. So allow me to demonstrate. Right now on frame one, we have nothing. Say I carry out some transform, like I move it on the z-axis. Straight away, I create a keyframe without having to do anything. So it will automatically create a keyframe whenever I move, rotate, and scale the object. So I can go to frame 20, I can move it down, we uh, scale it down a little, we move it down further, I can come back to frame 40, uh, scale it back up, and then I can even, maybe I can even duplicate, so I can select this one by right clicking, shift D to duplicate, and then move over here. If you don't want to use key, uh, if you don't remember shortcut keys, you can also do it from the menu here, um, duplicate and then just drag it over here. Now that when I play back my animation by hitting play, you can see that we've created a basic attempt at uh, a bouncing ball. And it's not a very good looking bouncing ball, it looks a bit fake, but uh, it's a pretty good effort for two seconds of work. So now let's look at the third way of animating in Blender 2.8. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, delete these keyframes and turn off automatic keyframe insertion. The danger with automatic keyframe insertion is sometimes you may not know you have it uh, turned on. 
So sometimes you may just make a normal adjustments over here, like you want to put it here, then you might accidentally move it there and then put it over here. And then all the while you, you're, you know, you're slowly, slowly accidentally making some changes. Bear in mind that uh, always try to keep this off whenever you're not in animation mode. Okay, so once you're finished with the animating, just turn it off straight away. Let's now look at the third way of animating in Blender. One of the main specialities of Blender is the idea that almost everything is animatable. Pretty much almost everything. So as you can see here, we can do transforms like this in the properties window. You can also animate that as well. So for example, I can choose to have the Z location here. I can put a keyframe here and you'll notice that it'll automatically create a keyframe there for us for just location. But if I want to do lock, rot and scale, that's pretty much the same thing. I can then move uh, some more keyframes, then I can adjust the rotation, uh, I can adjust the Z location, I can adjust the uh, scale, and then continue to add more keyframes. Note that you don't have to click every single box. For example, if you, if you know you're only going to scale on the X axis uh, for the entire animation, you don't even need to create keyframes for this one. That'll keep your um, keyframes a lot more optimized. But anyways, now if I play back my animation, you can see that that's another way of animating in Blender 2.8 as well. You can even go to the material level. So if I go ahead and create a new material and let's make it, I don't know, um, uh, let's make it a green. Uh, let's turn on shading mode. So we can see it in shading mode. Might even do the same in camera view. Uh, and then uh, we'll just move the location down a little bit. Uh, and then I'll, I'll just clear all these locations over here. By hitting A on my keyboard, we'll select all the keyframes and then X delete. Okay, so we have this uh, green colored ball over here. I can also create a keyframe by hovering over this color and hitting I. That's the same thing. Uh, unfortunately, in my version of Blender 2.8, I don't see that extra little uh, dot over here. But anyways, the, you can still use a shortcut key for this case. Um, I can then go to another keyframe and then change the color to something like, I don't know, red. And then also hit eye for that. So straight away you'll see that we've created a um, keyframe for the materials. So now if I play back my animation, you can see that cool transition from green to red. So I can even maybe finish it off by bringing it back to green again. Pretty cool. So there's a variety of cool things you can do with it. For example, you can make your character character go red, you know, by blushing or getting really tense about something. So there's some a lot of cool ideas you can play around with that. So although we talked about keyframes, I didn't exactly properly uh, mention this screen that you're seeing over here. This is called the dope sheet. So the dope sheet just contains a collection of all your keyframes. So over here, you can do a lot of cool and advanced things with your keyframes. Um, the most basic of which you can, for example, adjust the timing. So if I have a basic animation like this, a bouncing ball, and I realize, no, it's a bit too slow, I can of course adjust the timing by maybe manually moving the keyframes like so, by right-clicking and then pressing G, the usual shortcut keys like we do when we're moving objects, uh, and then make the animation a bit faster, or I can, uh, for example, make it even slower, Um, or I can just select uh, all the keyframes over here and then hit S to scale it down. So just like the basic operations to make the animation faster. Of course, in this instance, I only have the object going up and down, so I don't need the rotation or the scale. I guess I'll keep the scale because I want to have a bit of the, that uh, wash effect. I hover your mouse over it and then hit X and delete. Now when you play back the animation, you should still have the same animation because uh, our... Um, Dope sheet didn't do anything. Uh, so here we can do other cool stuff. For example, uh, if we find that our bouncing ball is slowing down just before it hits the ground, we can make it abrupt. So if I can select, if I select at the top over here, which will select all the keyframes, or I can select individually each keyframe. But in this case, I want to select everything. So I hit the, I select the top one there, and I can hit V on my keyboard and make it vector. So this will make the fall off quite harsh. So if I hit playback now you see that we have a harsh fall off. So if you, if you want to visualize that better, you can change from dope sheet to graph editor, and then you can see that better. So the, the graph editor just gives you a more graphical view of what your keyframes look like. 
So this is your uh, X, Y, Z, and um, these are your X, Y, and Z locations. So if I hit Alt A and then uh, select this by hitting B and then selecting that all those keyframes that we did before, and then if I hit V, I can do the same thing. So before it was on automatic. So as you can see, the animation slows down as it occurs like this, and then it starts to accelerate up. But if I make it abrupt by hitting V and then vector, we can see that it acts like a bouncing ball. Suddenly it hits a collision with the ground and then goes up. So that's just the basics of doing a bouncing ball animation. So uh, in the if you plan to be a character animator in the future, be prepared to get comfortable with the dope sheet and the graph editor. Uh, you can obviously do, do much more than, than, than just like that. This is called keyframe handle types. You can also change interpolation and um, all the other cool stuff, which will re probably require a tutorial on its own. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip it for this one. So lastly, I just want to show you one one other thing. So I, I want to go ahead and just load in a simple character. As you can see, I have a very basic character over here. This is part of the character. This is part of the cartoon character series that I have on my YouTube channel, um, which you can also download this uh, character rig if you like. So um, what I wanted to introduce in the, this final part of the animation uh, tutorial is the action editor. So here we can layer on multiple actions at once. So for example, if I go ahead and create a new action over here, let's just call this one waving. I can create very quickly a basic wave animation. So I'm just gonna turn on automatic keyframe insertion and then just um, very quickly, just pose this character to do a very quick wave animation. Okay, so I create that keyframe on frame 1, and then maybe on frame 20, I'll uh, just wave it here. Not the best animation, but I'm just doing this really quickly. So let's just duplicate this keyframe just to make it wave, and just duplicate that one and move it here. Finish it off, let's just put it something like... Okay, so now when I play back my animation, Now when I play back my animation, it's playing quite slowly. If you find that it plays back slowly, uh, then it probably, it's probably because the frame rate is lagging. The viewport, it, this, ten, this tends to occur if your, if your 3D objects are, quite, are using up a lot of memory, so they can't play back uh, in real time. So in order, if you wanted to play back in real time, just change from no sync to frame dropping. This means that it will drop some frames in order to make it, uh, make it real time. Okay, so now if I play back my animation, you'll notice that it's more real time. So maybe it's a bit too slow that wave animation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit A to select everything and then scale it down. So that we finish the animation within 40 frames. Okay, so we've done a very quick and very poor looking wave animation. So of course I want I want to end the animation on frame 40. So I'm gonna change the end over here to frame 40. So now when I play back my animation. We have a very quick and a very horrible looking wave. Uh, so now we have the wave animation. I want to go ahead and save that. So I just press F to force save it. And then I close it. Now I go ahead and uh, press um, Alt R and Alt G. That will move it back to the origin. And But I don't want to create a keyframe over here. I've accidentally created a keyframe over here. That's because I have automatic keyframe insertion turned on. So anyways, I'll delete it. And then I'll create a new action and I'll call this one um, uh, some other arm action. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna maybe play around with this arm over here. Okay, so for this one, I might do some other, some other arm action. So let's just say we create a keyframe over here. I'll go over here and then maybe make him do this. Maybe stretching his arms. Maybe about to get a gun or something, I don't know. And then he poses like he's about to shoot. I don't know, something like that. Now when I play back the animation, which is at the back, and then he goes for the shoot. 
Uh, in order to see that better, I might have to scale it down so we can see more of that. I want to play back. Okay. So that's one arm action there. So as you can see, we've uh, since we've closed the other action, we don't see the waving arm action because we've already closed it and we created a new action. So now let's just now if we can layer on these actions. Say you want to have the arm action and the wave action at the same time. How would we go ahead and do that? Well, we need to change to the NLA editor. So let's just force save that one and then close it. I'm going to go ahead and change from this dope sheet editor to the nonlinear animation editor, which used to be called the NLA editor. So in order to make this work, you need to have one action uh, working over here. So let's just go back to the dope sheet editor again. And on action editor, let's turn on the waving arm action. Okay, now let's go back to the nonlinear animation editor and then now we can see the waving arm animation over here. Simply click this button to add it to the timeline. So now we have the waving animation over here. Then we can go back to the uh, dope sheet editor again and then let's turn on the uh, arm action. We'll go back to nonlinear animation again and then now we can see that over here. So let's just click that to add it onto the timeline. So now we have two strips over here. So you can sort of imagine it like a, as if it's like a video editor that you're layering two video clips at the same time. So if I hit play now, we can see he's waving his arms and he's getting ready to shoot someone. I don't know why he would do that. But anyways, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Say for example, you want him to wave a bit more quicker, but you don't, you don't want to go back to the action editor and fix it. Well, you can do some uh, tweaks on this strip itself as if you're working with like a, a video clip in a video editor. Just right click and select one of them hit this plus key over here and then we can say for instance uh, we can speed up the animation so uh, we can ch change the scale uh, for example if I play back that now he waves extremely quickly oh sorry that's the arm action so let me put that back to one I meant the waving action so if I uh, scale it down it will play really quickly now so his arm action will be much quicker and then say I want to repeat that as well. Like a video clip on loop. Uh, so let me just turn off the uh, subsurf. Maybe we can down the, the viewport. Let's turn off the eyebrows. Okay. That might be slowing things down as well. Yeah, that, that was actually slowing things down. I'll probably all turn off the... Let's play back now. Oh yeah, that's a lot more smoother. So, okay, now we can see much better what we're doing. Okay, so if I go back before and as before, if I put the scale to one. So that's the original animation. So we can see the waving is a little bit too slow. So if we want to speed up this animation, we just scale it down to how much we like. That much, and then we play back now. Now he waves much quicker. Then we can make it repeat. We can do all sorts of things. Okay, so that's it. That is the basics of animation in Blender 2.8. So we looked at how to animate in Blender using the shortcut key I or hitting one of these, um, these new widgets that Blender 2.8 has to offer or just using the automatic keyframe insertion. We also looked at the Dope Sheet Editor to play around with keyframes. Mostly you would use the Dope Sheet Editor to adjust the timing of your animations um, and things like that. You'd use the action editor to create unique small little actions and then you'd use the non-linear animation to combine those actions to create cool and complex animations uh, pretty easily and pretty quickly. For example, you might have a walk cycle animation but at the same time he, he's doing things with, with his arms. Maybe he's pondering, maybe he's um, getting ready to fight, I don't know. You can layer on different different animation clips and create a very complex animation in a very short amount of time. So I hope this video has been useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.